Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we're continuing the rise of Samayi Let's Talk Lore series with episode 4 titled Wife, Concubines, and Sons. Now last episode, we ended by discussing how with Taopi's death, Samayi was named as one of the four co-regents for young Emperor Taorei. And even though Samayi did not see any military action during Taopi's reign, things would ramp up for him quite quickly under Taorei's reign. But before we get to that, I felt it was necessary to take a look at Samayi's family, namely his wife, concubines, and sons. So as a reminder, Samayi was born in 179, the second of eight boys to Samafang. While eight sons sounds like a lot, Samayi would actually eventually outdo his own father as he would end up with nine sons and two daughters to boot. And to produce these 11 children, Samayi had one main wife and at least three concubines. Now, Sima Yi's main wife was named Zhang Chunhua, the daughter of a county mayor in the Henei Commandery, which is also the commandery that the Sima clan is from. Zhang Chunhua was 10 years younger than Sima Yi, and the two of them most likely married when Zhang Chunhua was just 12 or 13 years young. While the exact year was not recorded down, we do know that when Sima Yi was getting his first regional post in 201, which he would ultimately decline, as he had to pretend to be disabled from the leg down in order to reject Cao Cao's summon, he was already married, as Sima Yi would be 23 in that year, which puts Zhang Chunhua at 13. And during the period when Sima Yi was pretending to be disabled, there was one incident recorded down in the Book of Jin that showcased Zhang Chunhua's decisiveness. At the time, Sima Yi had already moved out of his father's home and was living with Zhang Chunhua on a small estate with just one maid serving the two of them. Ever the scholar, Sima Yi used his free time to read, and since books were mostly bamboo scrolls at the time, they required frequent maintenance that involved leaving them out in the sun to rid them of moisture. However, one time when the squirrels were getting their time in the sun in the courtyard, it suddenly started to rain. And in order to save his precious books, Samayi leaped into action and dashed to the courtyard to save them from the downpour, much to the surprise of their one maid, who thought her master was disabled. Seeing this, Zhang Chunhua, who is no older than 16 at this time, decisively and cruelly murdered their maid to prevent her from ever sharing this secret to anyone. She then got rid of the body, and instead of hiring another maid to take care of the two of them, she started to cook and do all the houseworks herself in order to protect her husband's secret. Then in 208, right when Sima Yi finally stopped pretending to be disabled and joined Cao Cao's court, Zhang Chunhua gave birth to their first son in Sima Shi. Now, we will not be talking much about the sons, as they will all get their own time to shine in future Let's Talk Lore series, as many of them were important to the founding of the Jin Dynasty and beyond. So in addition to Sima Shi, Zhang Chunhua would also give birth to Sima Yi's second son in Sima Zhao in 211. Sima Yi's eldest daughter, who would eventually be known historically as the Princess of Nanyang in an unknown later year. And finally, Sima Yi's fifth son in Sima Gan in 232, which is interesting as in 232, Zhang Chunhua would be already 44 years old. And we know historically that in her later years, Sima Yi completely lost interest in her and started to favor his younger and more beautiful concubines. And one of these concubines would be Lady Fu, who would give birth to Sima Yi's third son, Sima Zhou. Sima Yi's fourth son, Sima Liang, Sima Yi's sixth son, Sima Jing, and Sima Yi's seventh son, Sima Jun. Now, as a side note, Lady Fu's second son and Sima Yi's fourth son, Sima Liang, would go on to become one of the eight princes, which brings up another point in that the Sima clan clearly had great health and the longevity genes, as none of Sima Yi's children would die during their infancy. The youngest to die would be Sima Yi's sixth son, Sima Jing, who would die of illness when he was 24 years young. And the oldest to die would be Zhang Chunhua's last son and Sima Yi's fifth son, Sima Gan, who would die of old age at 80 years old. 
But moving on to Samayu's later years, he had at least two other concubines and likely more, as these two were recorded down in history entirely because they produced sons for Samayi. One would be Lady Zhang, who would give birth to Samayi's eighth son in Sima Rong, who would eventually become prime minister during the eight princes' years in the early period of the Jin dynasty. Then finally, we have Samayi's favorite concubine in Lady Bai, who would give birth to Samayi's ninth and final son in Sima Lun, who is once again a member of the Eight Princes and the only son of Sima Yi to ever become emperor, even though his reign would be rather short-lived and end in his death as he was unable to hold on to power during the Eight Princes' struggle. Now we know there are other concubines as Sima Yi also had another daughter to an unknown mother in Princess of Gao Lu, who aside from her political marriage to Du Yu, of the notable Du gentry clan of Jing Zhao on the command of her older brother, Sima Zhao, and her early death before the ultimate founding of the Jin dynasty, not much else is known about her. As another interesting side note though, Du Yu's third son, Du Dan, would be the direct ancestor of the famed Tang dynasty poet Du Fu. And while we're on the topic of political marriages with powerful gentry clans, Sima Yi's eldest daughter, the eventual princess of Nanyang, would go on to marry Xun Yi, who is the grandson of Xun Yu and Cao Cao, as Xun Yi was the son to Xun Yu's eldest son, Xun Yun, and Cao Cao's daughter, princess of Anyang, Xun Yi's marriage to Sima Yi's eldest daughter had a lot to do with Cao Pi and Sima Yi's friendship, as Cao Pi was Xun Yi's uncle and was extremely fond of this nephew, despite hating his father Xun Yun for siding with Cao Zhi in the heir dispute. But ultimately, Cao Pi would set up his favorite nephew's marriage with the eldest daughter of his most trusted advisor in Sima Yi, which farther cemented the bond between the two clans. Lastly, as we will probably not have another chance to discuss this, we did mention that Sima Yi did eventually lose interest in his main wife, Zhang Chunhua, and how in his late years started to favor his concubine, Lady Bai. And we know this because he completely stopped seeing Zhang Chunhua in his later years, and one time when Sima Yi fell ill, Zhang Chunhua came to visit him. And seeing his aging wife, Sima Yi stated that seeing you, old thing, only will make me feel worse, and dismissed her. Returning home, Zhang Chunhua was so hurt by Sima Yi's words that she went on a hunger strike. At first, Sima Yi ignored her, but after her sons in Sima Shi, Sima Zhao, and Sima Gan all joined in to protest with their birth mother, Sima Yi relented and visited Zhang Chunhua to apologize to her in person. Later, Sima Yi would tell his concubine Lady Bai that he wouldn't have cared if Zhang Chunhua starved herself to death, but he didn't want his precious sons to suffer with that old thing. Now, because Sima Yi would not die until he was 73 years old, he would actually outlive his wife Zhang Chunhua despite being 10 years older as Zhang Chunhua would die in April of 249 at 59 years old. But we're definitely getting ahead of ourselves here, as we are going to end our episode and return next time, back to the year 227, as Cao Pi had just died, leaving Sima Yi behind as a co-regent to Emperor Cao Rui. At this time, none of Sima Yi's sons have joined the court, as even his oldest, Sima Shi, was just 20 years old, and although he was already well known as a famous scholar, it was difficult to get a post in Cao Pi's court. As Cao Pi resented the second generation scholars like Xia Hou Xuan and He Yan who Sima Shi was on par with. Now for the rest of this series, we will be returning our focus back on Sima Yi's time as Cao Rei's co-regent until Cao Rei's death. And in our next series covering Sima Yi's coup, we will return to his family once again, as his two eldest sons in Sima Shi and Sima Zhou will have huge roles to play during the coup. So hopefully you all have enjoyed this episode enough to hit that like button to help support the channel, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!